This is Jeff Ritter out in Phoenix, Arizona, and what I want to do today is just share some ideas with you with how I look at building a, a simple, repeating, athletic, powerful golf swing by making some analogies to what you see uh, a lot in professional baseball. So one of the big things that I believe in is that uh, golf and baseball and sidearm throwing and even a forehand stroke in tennis, uh, they're all played on a pure arc where the club or the racket or the swing of your arm travels away from the target line, back to the target line, and then back away again. That's just the way that an offline game is designed to be played. And when I say offline game, what I'm referring to is the basic difference between sports. So for example, if we're dealing with an online game, and then we're talking about maybe a sport like basketball, where you're actually standing physically on your line of flight. Uh, when you're straddling the target line, in order to be accurate with your throw, in this case, you actually have to move your arm, right hand or left hand, depending on if you're right handed or left handed, along that line of flight in order to hit your target. Uh, even a game like darts is an online game where you're standing on that line of flight and then moving in a linear fashion to be able to be accurate with your dart throw. Uh, in a sport like golf, we're not standing on the target line at all. We're standing away from the target line. And that means we're playing an offline game. So in order to be accurate uh, and powerful with an offline game, you have to swing off the target line. So if you already have thoughts in your head about you know, keeping uh, the club head moving down the line of flight or keeping the club face square to the target or swinging down the line, uh, then you're really not playing the game of golf uh, under the conditions which is designed to be played. So uh, when we start looking at a baseball swing, what I start noticing is the basic arm sequence. So here we have Ken Griffey Jr. on the right hand side. And you can see that his right arm is behind his body. His hands are not in front of his chest, they're behind him. Uh, his arms are going to swing in a sequence that goes arms behind, arms in front, and then arms behind. Arms behind, arms in front at the point of contact, and then the arms travel back behind again. So here we are showing the arm sequence for an offline game, behind, in front, and then behind. So when I do that same thing with my golf swing, you can see that I have my arms behind. I'm going to swing my arms in front and then arms back behind again, playing in a pure circular arc. Well, what's the difference between these two swings? Well, it's obviously the fact that he's playing on a plane which would be more elevated because of the height of the ball. And I'm playing on a plane which has a little more of a downward strike, again, because my golf ball is on the ground versus in the air. When I play on this sequence, arms behind, arms in front, arms behind, what I have to do in my case with golf is be able to create more of a downward pitch with my shoulders. But you can see as I'm striking right here, my arms and shoulders are going to be traveling on the exact same plane as his are. Arms and shoulders on the same basic plane. Uh, so if you've heard of things like a one plane swing or a single plane swing, that's what we're referring to. We're referring to being able to play baseball off the ground, so to speak. Arms and shoulders in the same tilt using a sequence of arms behind, arms in front, and then arms behind. So if we go ahead and kind of look at the things that I'm doing here with my golf swing. So here we are down the target line. And here we are from the face-on perspective. So you can see on the left-hand side, I'm sort of imagining that I'm standing at home plate. And uh, with this particular shot here, I'm actually sort of imagining that there's a pitch being thrown and it's going to land on home plate. So when I do that, arms behind, arms in front, arms behind, you can see all I'm doing is lowering the pitch of my chest or changing the plane of my shoulders in order to strike the golf ball which is sitting on the ground. So we go ahead and draw some lines right here. This would be my plane line from my original shaft position. And you'll see here as I swing down, my chest lowers, my arms are behind, my left arm is on my shoulder plane. Now my chest unwinds, and there's a shaft coming right down the plane into the back of the ball, matching perfect shaft angle tilt, and then right on back around my body, just like so. Arms behind, arms in front arms behind. Looking at it from the face on view, arms behind, arms in front, arms behind. 
to roll back for a second, we can start talking about the online versus offline game. So here's my line of flight, and you can see I'm not standing on that line at all. My feet are well off of that line. So when I'm playing an offline game, I have to be swinging off that line with the club head only touching the line in two cases, address and the moment of impact. Every other moment beyond those two positions, the club is moving off of the target line. So here we are swinging back down into the golf ball, arms behind, arms in front, arms behind. And you can see the plane that I'm on right here. It's a tilted plane. As I swing through, the club travels right back around on that same arc. A pure circular arc, only touching the line at address and the point of contact. And that's what we call an offline game. Well, from here you might say, you know what, uh, I kind of understand the arm sequence, but there's no way I would play golf with the shaft that vertical. So what we do from here is we understand that if we're playing golf, the top of our backswing, we're going to have a little bit of a forearm rotation to the right. And that's going to get the shaft, the left arm, and the shoulders on the same tilt. So here we are, forearm rotation to the right. Now I'm on the same plane. And I'm doing that with a little right hand forearm rotation, arms behind arms in front, arms behind. Forearm rotation to the right, puts everything right on the same plane, bend the chest down to what I'm striking, and again I have that same sequence just as I do in baseball. You can see here going in slow motion, left arm on the shoulder plane, arms behind, right on plane, arms being thrown in front, and then arms right on back behind my body. And of course, we'll look at that from the face on view as well. Forearm rotation, putting the shaft and arms in the same plane, bending the chest down to what I'm striking, arms behind, arms in front, arms behind, obeying all the rules associated with playing an offline game versus an online game. I'll go ahead and I'll slow this down here just so you can see. Chest down, moment of impact, just like a baseball swing. Arms traveling back around behind my body. So when you start looking at some of these movements, you start to see a lot of similarities to some of the great swings uh, that have played the game. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to pull up a little video of uh, Sam Snead. So Sam Snead, one of the greatest ball strikers of all time. Here's his shaft angle at address. And you're going to see, even though he gets his arm swing a little bit more vertical than I'm preaching right here, as he starts to unwind, his arms go from being behind his body, left arm on the shoulder plane, his arm swinging back in front of his body, and then watch how the club swings straight back around to the left. So if you can't see it, his shaft is right here on that plane. There's his left elbow traveling behind his body, his right arm traveling across. That's the exact same sequence as I'm creating right here. Arms behind, arms in front, and then arms back behind. There's my shaft angle and there's Sam's right there. Left arm working behind and there's my left arm working behind. So watch him swing a couple times. And it's really an amazing thing to see how the flight of his ball is traveling up on this line right here but his club is traveling on anything but that straight line. A pure arc again arms behind, arms in front, arms behind. So what do I do? So I start off with this baseball mentality. So let's go ahead and recap some of these things that I try to do with my own golf swing. I start off with this baseball mentality, understanding that my arms are traveling in a sequence of behind, in front, and then behind, just like so.
I also understand that in golf, I'm going to try and get my shaft plane more matching the plane of my shoulders. So the shaft isn't going to be so vertical. So what do I do? I understand when I get to the top of my backswing, as I'm working my right arm behind, that I need a little bit of a forearm rotation to the right, just like so. Arms behind, arms in front, arms behind. I also understand that in baseball, there's an attack mentality. The chest goes down. So with this basic drill, I'm attacking. Chest going down as I work in that sequence of arms behind, arms in front, arms behind. And then I, of course, take the exact same ideas into my regular setup and my regular golf swing. So now as I swing back, I'm working my right arm back behind my body. I make a forearm rotation to the right, and there's the top of my golf swing. Left arm on the shoulders, shaft down the target line, right arm behind. I have an attack mentality where my chest starts to go down a little bit. Arms and shoulders in the same plane, club is thrown back out in front of me at impact. Then, of course, completing the sequence, the arms travel back behind. Left arm behind, right arm across. Using the same principles as a baseball swing uh, and really seeing those same things in the swing of a, of a Sam Smead, who's uh, known as being a great ball striker, of course. Here we are from the face-on view. So if you're someone who's been a little bit confused by how to build a, a golf swing, um, if you struggle with ideas of, you know, how do I stop being stuck? You hear that, that comment a lot. Oh, the club is stuck behind me. Well, the thing is, is that the only reason the club would get stuck is if your shoulders are on the wrong pitch. If your shoulder plane is, is changing into the strike, uh, not staying on the same angle as your arm swing, uh, then the club would tend to travel on too flat of a plane and get too much behind your body. One thing you hear with a, a player like a Tiger Woods is that, well, I'm trying to keep my arms in front of me and I can't get stuck anymore. Um, well, the thing is that when your hands or arms are in front of you, you're building a swing that's going to be predicated off of rhythm and timing. Timing the swinging of the arms with the unwinding of your body. But if you were to take a page out of a baseball hitter's handbook, you would realize that when you're playing a circular sport, there's no need to keep your hands in front of your body the whole time. Let them go behind, let them swing in front, let them swing behind, and make sure that your arms and shoulders are unwinding on the same axis. That's the key to being able to unload on these golf shots. So if you're someone who feels like they have to try and slow their body down just to time their hands and their arm swing to get the club on plane, uh, then chances are you'd really benefit from uh, adopting some of these thoughts. So uh, these are just my ideas on how I play golf, some of the ideas I try and take into my coaching. Golf and baseball, they're both offline games. Uh, learn from the great hitters, follow their sequence, have an attack mentality, and I guarantee you'll play a heck of a lot better.